and welcome to this vlog. So I have been invited to uh, a event, their first event by um, La Roche Posay. Uh, and if you don't know that brand, it is a skincare brand, which is really, really very much like dermatology and like sciencey and everything, which is really, really exciting. Um, I feel very honored to be invited because it's such a good brand. Um, I've heard so much about it. I've maybe tried one product. I can't really remember exactly what it's called, but it is um, pretty good, pretty good. So I'm actually really interested to learn everything else about the brand and the skincare side and everything. And I've got Shane with me. <laughs> Shane's coming along for it. So I'm gonna take you guys along um, and we're gonna see what the event involves. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it's very dermatology. Yes, sorry. <laughs> so, do you, do you tell what all this is? I'll be honest, I don't actually know. So this, I assume, is maybe a moisturiser. <laughs> That's quite cool. Quite cool. Iced oh, tea. Ooh. Can you drink it? I don't know. I assume so. With silver leaf, white chocolate dusting, and almond flakes. That sounds well nice. Honestly, can you drink it? I assume so. I don't know. <laughs> Try it. I assume you can. Shake it, maybe? <laughs> Listen, this, this is sort of something you hear about, and then it's more things or something. <laughs> it looks so cool, though. So, this is natural sugar froyo with silver leaf, white chocolate dusting, and almond flakes, it. and it's an iced tea. Oh! <laughs> is it nice? It looks so cool. It is nice, but it does taste like something you. Really? It is iced tea, isn't it? Yeah. Can I try a bit of your one? I don't want to. Well, we're here. Does it taste? It's not nice. It's like a sugary drink, really, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's interesting. It is interesting. I can't taste what, like, put my finger on what is what. Do you know what I mean? You can. I'm trying to focus it. <laughs> Ooh, very cool. <laughs> What's your verdict? Christy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you dancing? <laughs> Advertising. This is water. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Yeah. Ah. It does. Yeah. That's so cool. This is gonna be quite good for like, you've got bare skin, obviously you've got no makeup on. So it's gonna be quite interesting to see if there's anything for like, we can do on shape. Not like try stuff on, but like, I don't know, maybe there's like a test for your skin. I don't know. These are all interesting though. Is this my cellar water. I don't know, there's so many, oh, that goes my bag. There's so many products. So cool. Is it French? It sounds French, doesn't it? I assume it is. Mm. Some rather French, doesn't it? Yeah. 
so absolutely anyone can access so it. You just literally go on the Liverpool Zone website and click okay. through. So it's quite nice to do at home. And yeah. um, when you've got bare skin, yeah. it works yeah. best. Okay. Here's Kira now. Um, and yeah, I'll let Kira explain it to you. Oh, okay. Hi, how are you? 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 Blemish Parents Body Skin, so we keep your skin that seems very perfect. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, so it may work better at home with no makeup, but what we do is our first day. Yeah, so how it works, we have um, a database of over over 6,000 acne patient photos um, diagnosed by 500 of germs. So it's powered by AI and it's able to understand your skin type based on the photos it takes. Okay, so we'll start the scan. And this is going to seem really unnatural, but I'm going to get you to right up here. So basically, to respect a germ, and so you just pop your hair back a little bit, to respect a germ's clinic, it has to be like really up close because they get really into the skin. So even a little bit further, yeah, closer. For sure. And I think so, you have to fill the whole screen. So. Um, I actually have like prescribed um, cream by the doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really bad. Yeah, so yeah. That's the that's the same here. So it's really nice so it can give you the full scope of your skin. So your grade is zero of acne and it's obviously helpful that you're on your medication. Yeah. So as well as give you some tips. So because you're currently being advised, it's essential to respect their advice. So spot scan will give you a routine that you need to use in conjunction with the advice and healthcare professional that you use. But because your skin is quite fragile and dry with this medication, you have a risk of that for age. So we think like age, think hydrating. So it's specifically tailored for fragile skin because of acne related products that tend to dry out your skin. So we've got these here today, so you can get them to you to give them a try and let us know when you get on. Yeah, so nice. Thank you. I was interested actually because I, I have um, basically I've been on this um, yeah, Lime Cyclone, the, the drug as well as um, <laughs> yeah. um, because I have a really, really bad allergy. Yeah. Basically, what I have now is I don't have bumps, but I have a spider yeah. suit. Okay. And I have some marks still, and I don't know, do you have any products that can help you? Yes. So I was interested in So, what I'll give you my mom's getting some of your kind of high grade routine. Okay. We also have a product called Duo Plus. And it's very good for us. Ingredients in it to stop the recurrence of flare up and also um, anti marks. So the technology does help it to um, reduce kind of the marks that are left by the start. So it might help you. Yeah. Let me just grab my pen, I'm not sure where I left it. Oh, that's right. And then I just thought, well, I've got this I have close skin, but I have full makeup on, so that's why. <laughs> I'm intrigued by your skin, though, because you, you are often not very hydrated. Exactly. Hydrated? Yeah. You can see it around there, though, at the moment, but that's where sh it's because of shaving. That's what it is, shaving marks. So, yeah. I'm intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> Remind me of my name. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Right and right. I'm not right. You don't need anything. <laughs> oh, look at that. There's nothing. Oh, okay. Grade zero out of four. So I'll show you each side of your face. I know it seems so unusual looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> phone and stuff it's it's quite nice great zero I'll give you some tips so cleansing gel some toner and also a mattified moisturizer Ooh. so this is what it's recommending and fr matte it's like the lightest of our moisturizers within the range so right, it's kind okay. of just for someone who's like prone to a bit of shine mm. or has clogged voice yeah okay right yeah you'd like to give it a try mm -hmm. yeah sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> sounds great. good uh, what was your name uh shane shane super <laughs> Why not go for it? Yeah, thank you. Actually, oh, I wanted that one. I look prettier. No, this one looks not. I want it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're exactly the same. So yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's quite cold. Focus, focus, focus. How do you focus? Is that focus? Oh my god, it smells so good. So this is frozen yogurt with silver leaf and white chocolate curls on. Oh, I'm very excited for this actually. So excited. Do you want to try it first? <laughs> do you eat this? Do you eat the foil? Yeah. Is it foil or? Is that foil? Does she, so, do you take that out though? No. You don't need foil, do you? Silver leaf. Foil. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Is it nice? So good. It's like a coconut yogurt. Oh my god. Oh my god. Let me try. Oh, hold it. Hold it. <laughs> oh my god. Isn't that nice? So good. Okay, we're gonna enjoy these. So Jenny actually said as well that um, there is like a talk panel at half six, um, so you get to talk to like the skin um, experts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's like a Q&A after, basically all about like adult acne and obviously the way that my skin is going at the moment, I'm really intrigued by it. So it is actually 20 past four, so what she did say is we could like go out and bits and pieces and then come back if need be. Right, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go get some food because me and Shane are actually really hungry and then we're going to come back um, for half six and um, watch the panel and stuff about adult acne because this is me. Yeah, so I'm very excited. Yeah. Two hours later. Good evening. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much for coming to join us. Um, I appreciate that it is freezing cold and it's really lovely that you're all here with us. Um, we've been here all day, we've had such a lovely day and met so many people, so we're just delighted to have you. 
Um, I'm delighted to welcome you on behalf of La Roche Posay and on behalf of myself, Ruth and Emma. Um, we're all thrilled to be here because it's a brand that we all really love and trust. Um, and I think one of the reasons why people do trust La Roche Posay so much is, you know, the brand mission is simple. They just want to make life easier for people with sensitive skin. Um, so today I'm joined by consultant dermatologist, Dr. Emma Wedgworth and Ruth Quilly of A Model Recommends and we really want to deep delve into the world of adult acne. So I think when we're thinking about acne it's really a combination of an individual's own tendency to get acne and then lifestyle factors that can also contribute to it. So we all have sebaceous glands which sit in the middle layer of our skin and that's what produces the oil within our skin and for some of us the way that those sebaceous glands are programmed means that the oil is produced in slightly the wrong way and so often what will happen is instead of coming out in a nice even sort of fashion the pore and, and the gland will get a bit blocked and that will be the initial phase of acne, It'll be like your black head or your white head underneath the skin. And once the pores got blocked, it doesn't take much for that to become a very red, inflamed, painful bump. Um, and each of us have different programming of our sebaceous glands. So a lot of it is genetic and intrinsic within us. Then we have things like hormonal changes, which can sometimes influence it. And then we also know that there are certain lifestyle factors. So for example, um, what we put on our skin and what we eat, and they can all contribute to our tendency to get acne. And how would you know if you have acne prone or sensitive skin when you're trying to identify your own skin type? <laughs> So I think with the acne prone um, skin, a lot of us do know about that. So we know that for people who have adult acne, about 80% of us, that will have persisted since teenage years. And you're just knowing that you're getting a steady stream of bumps or perhaps bumps that come around your period time. The other 20%, it will have come on later in life, so over the age of about 24 or so. And, and you'll know very much, you get inflammatory bumps, you might get them around the jawline, you might get them elsewhere. They're painful, they're difficult to, to, to settle down. Um, and then if you've got sensitive skin on top of that, you might notice that when you're trying to treat your skin, actually the rest of your skin becomes red, inflamed, it can become dry and flaky. And for so many of us, that is a challenge. So you've got the bumps and you're trying to treat that, but then as soon as you start to treat it, you notice that your skin starts to become inflamed and so you're constantly balancing the acne prone nature of your skin alongside the sensitivity. No, I think there really is a link between stress and inflammatory skin conditions. So we know that um, stress can actually trigger our adrenal system, our cortisol within us and often that will have an impact on red inflammatory skin conditions like acne. Do you find that changes in your routine impact your skin or even when you're traveling and stuff do you stick to the same products and keep it consistent i don't it's not necessarily exactly the same products but it's yeah. the same types of products okay. so i don't very i've got my testing stuff that i do for model recommends yeah. but then i've got my stable of um you know my tried and tested that i use all the time and i very rarely <laughs> swap whole routine it might just be that I'll swap in a cleanser or swap in a new serum and because otherwise you can't see what's working anyway. Yeah. So, you know, you have to do that. But um, yeah, I think if, if my my skin's always a lot better if I'm just at home and doing it, you know, because you just get into a rhythm, don't you? You're just happier when you're, or I'm happier when I'm settled. Yeah. I'm not buzzing around all over the place. Adult acne or, say for example, for me, I have two different types of rosacea. So I'm in the La Roche-Posay crew as much as anybody because that's something I have to pay a lot of attention to. Um, we had such a great response to this event because I think so many people are in the same boat. Um, but do you think there's a rise in adult acne, Emma? Because like, we were blown away by the amount of people that were like, yes, please, love to come, hear more. I think there's definitely a real, real-time increase in adult acne that we're seeing at the moment. But I also think that people are now more willing to come out and say it. I think for a long time, we a lot of people have been living with quite frequent spots and they just have to sort of put up with it. So I think people are coming forward more to doctors on social media and actually talking about adult <coughs> acne more. But I think there is also a real-time increase. And it's, it's very interesting to speculate about why that might be. I think we know that um, over time, um, people will get less and less and less acne. And sometimes things like having pregnancies will improve it and people are having babies generally later so there's I think there's a lot of reasons why we might be seeing the increase and we're definitely see, seeing people come forward more with it I have so many people that come to see me and just say I've spent thousands of pounds on skincare I don't know what to do yeah. 
tell me what to do. You know, I, I just don't know whether these products are working or they're not working. Sometimes they don't even have major skin complaints. They're literally like, just tell me what to do. Yeah. So yes, I have a lot of those. Is it sharing stories, isn't it? Yeah. So you've always got, with everything, you've got sort of professional advice and then you've got the sort of more relatable, you want, you want to know that somebody has been through the same thing and there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Not just with skincare, with all kinds of things in life. And I think that's what social media does well. There's lots of things it doesn't do very well. Yeah. Um, but it, what it does well is it connects people who have the, the shared, shared experiences or want to have shared experiences um, and just want to, even if they don't even interact with that person, it's just relatable. So they look at that and it yeah. cheers them up even, you know, if it's as simple as that. So for, for women adult, uh, who have adult acne, we estimate that about 10 to 20 percent of them will have some sort of hormonal abnormality. And that's probably likely to be polycystic ovaries. Um, but for the other 80%, it may just be that your skin cells have an, a sort of an abnormal sensitivity to your circulating hormones. So your hormones might be totally normal, but the way that your skin reacts to them may be abnormal. And that's why every time you start to you know, ovulate and get your period, you get this big breakout of spots. When I'm in clinic, what I'll ask people is, are your periods regular? Um, and do you have any other signs of a hormonal imbalance? So excess hair, particularly around the face or the, the chest. Um, and if you have got irregular periods or you're noticing any sort of excess hair, then it's definitely worth getting a hormonal blood test. Um, and the things that I tend to hear about women in their 30s and 40s, and particularly women, but also actually men. So I'm saying women, actually it affects everybody's confidence. But something I hear time and time again is, you know, I'm, I'm at work, I'm absolutely smashing it but I've got spot and I'm standing up in front of the whole room and I feel like a teenager and I just don't feel as confident as I, I could do. But I just think it impacts on every aspect of their life um, to, to a varying degree, but it has a huge impact on confidence. If you both had one piece of advice to give someone, whether it's from an emotional point of view or a really practical point of view, someone that's struggling with adult acne, what would your one parting statement be to them? Um, I think that I would be just simplifying everything mm -hmm. as a first call you know because obviously you can go and see a dermatologist or other things you can do but just the most simple thing that you can do at home on the first day is just to pare everything back so just cleansing really well but not stripping the skin yeah. um, treating with something with you know salicylic acid something that's soothing but effective and then just lightly moisturising and I think that if you can take it back to a starting point and just get rid of all the noise, yeah. you know, like masks and peels and all that kind of thing, just take it back to basics and just, you know, take stock of what's going on. I yeah. think that's good rather than panicking and going out and spending, you know, £8,000 on, <laughs> on like courses of peels <coughs> and stuff because I think that it does make you panic when it, when it happens if it's sudden like it was for me. For me, I think it would be not to put up with it. I mean, acne is so, so treatable, and I'll see a lot of clients in clinic that will have suffered it for you know, 5, 10, 20 years. And do all of the simple things first. Get your skincare right, change your lifestyle, and if it's still really not shifting, then go off to the next step in terms of, sort of medical treatment because it's a very treatable condition. Hi. Um, what I wanted to ask was how to deal with cystic acne, the ones that actually sit under the skin, and what's the best way to treat something like that, and what kind of life cycle it has like how soon after treating it would it disappear because sometimes they just sit there and you just want it to go <laughs> i think there is a little bit of um confusion on the internet and social media about true cystic acne so true <coughs> cystic acne is the really really large fluid filled bumps that you get underneath your skin whereas the sort of the more lumpy spots are often things called nodular acne um, if you've got true cystic acne, that is really only ever going to get sorted by medical treatment, if I'm honest with you. And my rule of thumb is that the deeper down the spot, so the lumpier the spot, the deeper down it occurs within the skin, the more likely you are to need medical treatments. More superficial spots, blocked pores, things like that respond really, really well to over-the-counter ingredients like salicylic acid. If it's getting really deep and lumpy, you're likely to get need medical treatment. And that may be tablets, it may be prescription creams. For true cystic acne, where you've got the big sort of fluid-filled lumps, Actually, things like rare Accutane are probably what works best. Um, and it's very important to get that acne under control as soon as possible because we know that that really deep and lumpy acne is the one that's most likely to scar. Um, I think a lot of people have acne and then if they're lucky enough to you know, get rid of it, they're left with a lot of scarring. Is there something that people can do at home <clears> or <throat> like that? Because I think a lot of people recommend peels, etc., etc. But is there something that's more accessible to the majority of people that can help with acne scarring? 
This is a great question, and acne scarring is often something that comes up, and I think there are several facets to it. So the first thing is, if you are getting scarring, but you're still getting active acne, sort your acne out, because otherwise you'll just be chasing your tail, you'll get a new spot, you'll get a new scar, you treat one, you know, it just keeps going. If you've totally sorted out your acne and that's totally calm, then you have to take stock and think, what what aspect of scarring do I have? And there are lots and lots of different types of scars that can occur after acne. So if you have darker skin, you may get pigmentation, you may get little brown marks, you may get deep contour marks, you may get red spots. And actually it really makes a huge difference um, about what type of scars that you have. Once you're getting quite a lot of deep pitting scars, actually they may require certain types of treatment that you need in an office. So that might be laser or injections or peels. Um, but in terms of pigmentation and redness, a lot of that will fade. So if you give that sort of three to six months and you look at the vast majority of people, three to six months down the line, it's much better. The things that you can do for pigmentation are sun protection, vitamin C serums, and then retinoids can actually have a very nice effect um, to try and even out the skin tone. So actually, if you're thinking about scarring, you don't have lots and lots of deep contour scarring, you've sorted your acne out, sun protect, vitamin C serum, and some form of retinol, um, and give that a good three to six months, and then see where you go. This is moving away from adult acne and going into spots. You know when you, it's like two days before a really important event, like someone's wedding or your birthday or whatever, and then you suddenly get one of those massive, massive spots. What is the surefire quickest way just to get rid of it? <laughs> and are we allowed to squeeze it? Because that would be my <laughs> question. No, so generally squeezing spots is just a no-no. You what? end up causing much more damage um, than you end up you know, improving things. So squeezing, not generally. If it's a smaller spot, you can try either topical salicylic acid or occasionally topical benzoyl peroxide as a spot treatment. That can often shrink it down. If it's a really, really big one and it's before your wedding or a big event, then in clinic we often inject um, a little bit of steroid into it and that's often something that you know, we'll do on models or actresses um, because that does take it down overnight, essentially. We need a little packet of bones. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be available in the <laughs> <laughs> Rosh Pose injections. Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned lifestyle choices. Um, what would you say would be the best lifestyle or dietary tips for somebody suffering with acne? So lifestyle and um, skincare choices is hugely important. I see a lot of people who come in and they are spot prone and actually they're using a whole load of oils and balm cleansers and they've, you know, there's a lot of myths about actually your skin is producing, you know, needs more oil, it's producing more oil because it's dehydrated and that's, that's not true. So the, the sorts of things that I advise are avoiding oils, balm cleansers, long wear makeups, powders. So in terms of skincare choices, that's really important. And then going across to sort of dietary changes, um, I do recommend a low um, GI diet. If you look at, um, at the, um, in the, the worldwide differences in acne, what's really interesting is that as our diet becomes more westernized, what you see is an increased um, rate of acne. And there are a couple of tribes um, which, are, which have a very sort of paleo diet and they have very, very low rates of acne. And it's not actually explained by genetics alone. So there's something about our westernized diet that seems to be quite insulin producing that seems to give us all higher rates of acne. So really minimizing that, keeping dairy to a minimum, not totally taking it out, but re reducing down milk, ice cream, and the, the GI um, index is very important. You mentioned um, with the cleansing balms and oils um, that that's quite bad for your skin. Interesting, I don't actually have that bad skin, but I invested in a cleanser that was oil-based. And um, I'm just wondering, when you you obviously just said that you it our, our um, skin produces the right, right amount or should produce the right amount of oil, and we shouldn't be topping up. Um, so I sometimes cleanse at night with the oil, and I'm thinking, is that not a good idea to do? I'm not a fan of oils for several reasons. So one is because they can be quite pore blocking. And there are some, if you look at um, the oils overall, not all, all oils are as pore blocking as other oils. So there are certain oils like argan oil, for example, which is supposed to be quite non-comedogenic. But the reason I really don't like oils is because a lot of them are pore blocking and the essential oils are quite irritant to the skin. But also if you look at the studies between oils versus moisturizers, we tend to find that moisturizers are a much better way to hydrate your skin. So people often ask, I, I'm acne prone, but I'm also dry. So I'm oily, but I'm dry. How does that work? And it's because there are two different facets. So your oil production comes from your sebaceous glands. But your hydration of your skin is actually about your skin barrier, the outer layer of skin, um, which is, is what really holds in the hydration. And to hydrate that in the most optimum way, actually moisturizers, well-formulated moisturizers tend to be much better than oils. 
Sometimes people like oil-based cleansers because actually previously what they were using was probably quite harsh foaming cleansers. If you pick the right cream cleanser, it can be just as gentle and generally better for the skin. Hi. Um, so I have had like on off acne for like the last 10 years um, from like hormonal and just like child spots so I'm like 23 now um, and basically I've just come off um, Lime Cycling for three months uh, sorry four months it was actually extended um, and I was actually on the cream different as well um, so that's what um, my nurse practitioner um, recommended because my GP wasn't available and I was like yeah that's fine because basically I went up talking about Reaccutane because I did my research and I was like look I've, I've tried almost everything over the counter and it was just very emotional <laughs> um, and I was just sick of it basically I know you get you know like child acne and hormonal and everything um, so I've just come off of that and basically what she's put me on now is um, a cream called Duac so it's still prescribed but a part of me is actually thinking, is this good for my skin continuously going from a, um, a tablet to a cream to another cream? I've got like my cleansing ritual and stuff, um, but I do have a <coughs> cleansing oil balm to take my makeup off, which I do swear by. I do like it. But I do find I have a lot of blackheads and everything. And I just find I've still got my little baby spots, but they're not as bad and a lot of scarring like left over. And I don't know what the sort of situation is. Do I stay on the cream that I'm prescribed or like... I don't know, because my next step obviously would be a dermatologist, potentially, if it does come back worse, if you got anything. <laughs> so, I mean, it's always really difficult to give you sort of exact advice without yeah. knowing all of your background, but in terms of principles, so the first thing to say is that antibiotics can be a really helpful short-term measure to treat um, the skin with, but actually, when I use them, I only ever use them in conjunction in creams, and the aim is really that you hit it hard for the first three months, and then you take out the tablets, and you keep going with creams. And actually, if you're still getting ongoing changes with acne, actually creams are thought to be very, very safe. So retinoids, longer term to maintain acne, are actually thought to be very safe. And if that actually controls your acne to a point where things are reasonable, I think that's a much better balance than having to go back on tablets. Um, you can combine treatments. So one thing that I found really helpful over the years is to combine different types of creams because actually they target different things. You mentioned a benzoyl peroxide based preparation and a retinoid and actually they work really nicely together. Benzoyl peroxide can dissolve the block pore from outside, retinoids can help from underneath. But I would definitely urge you to, to have a think about your skincare regime. And even though you might like the feeling of something, it may not be the best thing for your skin type. Okay. And so the bottom line is I would likely, obviously not knowing your background, but keep going with the creams maybe tweak your skincare regime a little bit okay. and if you're still not happy then get some more professional advice all right amazing. thank you hello so we're home now i've got to be a little bit quiet though because everyone's asleep upstairs um but i just wanted to show you the three products that me and shane both got actually um as well so for shane um after doing like the whole like spot skin scan focus so <laughs> First, Shane got the Purifying Foaming Gel for Oily Sensitive Skin. So this is literally just a cleanser, I believe. Yeah. So this is a cleanser that he got, full size as well. Amazing, 200ml, very grateful. He also got the Effaclar, um, what is that, Anti-Blackheads Toner as well. So this is tested um, for oily, acne-prone skin. Um, it's just a lotion, very, very exciting as well and then last he got a moisturizer so he got the Effaclar matte hydrogen um moisturizer everything is literally in half french half english so it's quite hard to like read uh so it's the anti brilliance anti pause one basically so it looks like this so he's got um his shine free moisturizer anti shine anti enlarge pause matte moisturizer very exciting and then I got the Effaclar H cream, hydrating cleansing cream, sorry. So mine comes with a pump, which is quite good. So this is potentially going to be my new cleanser and maybe a makeup remover. I'm not sure. I will have to do my research on this. Um, and also I got the multi-compensating soothing moisturizer, long lasting comfort, tested um, on oily acne prone skin. That's pretty much all what it is. Um, oily acne prone skin and stuff so this is a moisturizer 
as well so i got this one and then last but not least basically um because obviously i had a full face makeup on and they did the um like test thing and they were like oh you're really clear skin and i was like honey you can't see them because i caked so much makeup on today <laughs> um which was a little bit much and to be fair i would have loved to have gone with no makeup on like at, at all so you can see my skin um and what i'll do is actually insert a picture um of how my skin is tonight um with everything because um if you are following me and you are a regular subscriber then you know that i've been on this three month like skin journey and stuff and i've actually documented my fourth month um as well so i'm on like this pres prescribed cream medication um and i actually <laughs> asked a question during like the q a and everything which you probably saw um about obviously my situation and, and what the next step is and stuff and, and all that jazz really um so basically i said that you know my spots i've got a little bit of like scarring left over and stuff um as such so this is actually let me okay right so there's a better english side there we go so this is the innovation Effaclair duo plus this is for se severe imperfections marks this is a corrective unclogging care and this is anti-marks and stuff which is quite interesting so um i will again have to like look into this and stuff and what you have to do um let's just read this very quickly so it immediately hydrates the skin from 12 hours, helps improve the appearance of imperf imperfections, so redness and skin texture, and from eight days it significantly reduces imperfections. That's amazing. So it says apply to the whole face morning and or evening after cleansing skin with the foaming gel. Um, yeah, that's really, really exciting. I'm very intrigued to try that and everything um and then there was also like other tips like cutting out your dairy is gonna help with your skin your hormones um can obviously you know cause acne and stuff like that but i had such a nice time i'm very very grateful to jenny and maddie and the rest of the um team for inviting me i'm very very grateful really really appreciate it it was super duper fun and really exciting to actually share their first um event as well so i really really enjoyed it um and i've learned quite a bit more about the brand already i am definitely going to be doing more research and it's so sad like my normal cleansing makeup remover is actually probably causing me all my blackheads and block pores and stuff which is such a shame because i feel like it does the job and really helps my skin but in reality it's actually giving me more blackheads and you know like clogging my skin and stuff more which is, sucks um so yeah i'm definitely going to look into that again and again just a huge huge thank you um and allowing me to bring a plus one so thank you shane as well for supporting me we love that and if you are interested i will leave um the link to la roche per se but per se per se per se how do you say <laughs> la roche per se <laughs> la roche per se that sounds awful <sighs> that sounds really bad <laughs> in the description box below and they actually did um for like the q a as well they did like an instagram tv um little story thing as well so definitely go check out um la roche i'm just gonna say la roche <laughs> um on instagram and their website and twitter and stuff like that which is amazing so um yeah huge thank you to everyone again and i hope you enjoyed this video everyone if you did please give it a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you for a brand new video soon bye